I've been writing APIs for an awfully long time, and I've always benefited from being able to test REST APIs using things like Postman and other tools like it, even some tooling inside of the IDEs like the Thunder Client and Visual Studio Code. There's always been another plugin that I was interested in in using inside of Visual Studio Code, and that same plugin is now available with the preview of Visual Studio. So I wanted to show you how it works and why I think it's sort of interesting. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome to Coding Shorts. So here in Visual Studio, I have a sample project that I'm calling dealership. You can see the dealership solution down there. And it's just a simple API project. I'll actually be using this whole demo at KCDC 2023 directly in Kansas City. If you're gonna be there, feel free to come to my workshop. So one of the problems I have as I'm building APIs is that I have different ways of writing those APIs. But before I start to develop in the project itself, I want to understand and figure out what the actual API. I like to look at the use case and design the API, the way that the URLs look, the way that the payloads look before I ever get started. Now, if we if we use something like Thunder Client, which is an extension of the Visual Studio that I quite like, we can just go localhost, I think it's 8088, and cars. And this will do the work I want. And it, it's even full featured that I could have a bunch of these or could have a collection and do all that work. But it requires a lot of time to sort of set up or getting into the configuration files to set this up. And so for quick one-offs, this is great. But if I'm doing .NET, I can go ahead and create a new file that ends in e either HTTP or .REST, whichever you prefer. They're both identically the same. And the idea behind these files is to be able to write requests. So you're going to be doing a direct writing of a request. And then you'll notice once you write this, in this case, get, we can go ahead and just click the send request. It's the whole response that's returned. So it's telling you what kind of headers were being sent back. And then the actual data here that you know is consumable and we could break it down into its individual parts. And if we want to do a couple of these, what I like about this is I can go ahead and define multiple interfaces in here. But you'll notice the second one doesn't get a send request. That's because it doesn't know what the request is. It assumes anything after this is going to be part of that request. So you just need to put three pound signs as a comment between them, and then you can get all of these. And in that way, you can really very easily write simple tests. This doesn't replace unit tests in any sense, but a simple way for you to, while you're developing, go back after what the actual test was, right? We call this send request. We actually get just one of those items in there. And we could even do posts like localhost, API cars, right? And what we do for the post, we can say content type. Notice we're getting IntelliSense for all of this here. And we'll say application.json. And then we can write a little JSON here. Make, of course, it doesn't know about what the, what the data structure is. So we're going to have to go ahead and just create it. So I'm going to say Subaru, Subaru model cross trek year 2021 new false my old car then four five six seven eight nine ten eleven have to be exactly 17 characters in length and i'll just put vehicle type and i'll tell it that it's an suv even though it's a pretty small suv and so all of this becomes part of that one request so what happens if we send the request here We'll see it was created with a new ID. In fact, if we just copy this over to our a new request, which we probably want to do, we can go ahead and use and get that same request back. So one of the ideas here about doing this, at least as far as I'm concerned, is being able to take an entire set of code. But you can see there's a lot of commonality here in our code. One of the other things this allows you to do is actually set up variables. And so I'm going to say base URL equals, and 
doesn't require quotes or anything. It's just going to take what is literally after that localhost API, right? And then I can very simply do a quick replace to base Earl. And that way, if the, anything about the server changes, I can do that. I can also say test car ID, and I'm going to give it a one. And then, of course, I could use that here as well. And there's a bug in here where it creates two sets of braces, but the syntax really is two braces uh, beginning and end before you use those. So when I do that send request, I'm still getting that same list. When I'm requesting for the ID two, uh, for the ID one, I'm getting that Bentley. But if we made this 15, then we're obviously going to get a nested Martin and all that, right? So this is not a new functionality. This is in the extensions and it's called REST Client. This REST Client been around for a little while and it has all these features, even be able to do things like basic auth, AWS and Active Directory support. It's really pretty powerful when you start to talk about what you wanna do here. But because this has been around, a lot of people have been using this. But for those of us who still use Visual Studio, this may feel like sort of a barrier to entry. Well, in Visual Studio Preview 4 that I'm looking at now, in the newest preview of Visual Studio, I can actually go ahead and open that up. It's 2022 preview, and I think it's preview 2 that it has it in. Let's go ahead and look at about to see, make sure. It's actually preview 1 of 2022, which is that 17.7 version. And we can do the same thing. Here's that rest, and what you'll find pretty quickly is it's pretty much the same. The big difference is being able to actually call debug on this, and this will execute the project and then and then call this. So while we can still do the same story in Visual Studio now directly to send the request, if we were to go to one of our APIs, I think it's in a controller here, and we want to set a breakpoint there, we should be able to just say debug there, and we're right into that project, right? We can see that it's debugged us directly into the right place. And while you're still going to need to do integration tests and unit tests based on your controllers, depending on how complex they are and what you want to do, I think this feature is really useful in that if we look at one I have here called Cars Rest, I've actually defined my entire interface inside of one file. So as I'm working through this, I'm working down Oh, do I have a post? Can I have a put? Will it delete that item, etc.? And for the other kinds of things like employees or look at the sales person and lot for it, you're going to see us being able to take some amount of work that we're dealing with and really decide to have an easier way to go through that development. So I'm a big fan of these HTTP or REST files. And now it works in Visual Studio as well as Visual Studio Code. My guess is there's probably something similar for Writer and Visual Studio for the Mac, but on the Mac, at least you can go to Visual Studio Code if you really want to be doing this. So hope this helps. I want to thank you for joining me for another coding short. I'm going to be doing a lot of these smaller features as we go further down into the .NET space. Certainly this might be a good time to subscribe to this channel so that you get a lot of these videos. I'm trying to do one to two a week. Let me know what you think about them. If you like them or don't like them, go past the like button and in, into the comments and go ahead and comment about it. If you're needing help with your own projects, I consult. You can find me at sean.wildermuth.com as well as a number of my courses are up at pluralsite.com. Thanks for joining me in this new coding short. This has been Coding Shorts. Thanks for joining me.